In this video, I'll demonstrate how to underglaze and scraffito a hand-built bowl. So, uh, in this video, I'm using a banding wheel and a piece of scrap paper on top of the banding wheel to prevent it from sticking or getting dirty. I've got a smooth, leather-hard bowl and a wide brush and some velvet underglaze. The banding wheel helps you to apply the glaze really evenly and consistently if you turn it with one hand while applying the glaze uh, in the other hand. Flip the paintbrush over to make sure you get all of the glaze off of the brush and spread the coats out evenly. You can also underglaze the bottom of the bowl because unlike glaze, underglaze does not stick to the kiln shelf. It's good to wait a few minutes until the first coat dries before you start adding the second coat of underglaze. It usually takes two coats to get a full coverage um, on the bowl. For the second coat, I'm applying the glaze up and down instead of uh, left and right. The banding wheel still helps um, as I can turn the bowl without having to touch it with my hands. Um, still spreading the underglaze out on my second coat to make sure it's nice and even. After the second coat is dry enough that you can touch it without smearing, you wanna lift it up and check the inside. At this point, you can either touch up the rim by scraping off the underglaze that kind of slipped underneath there. Um, another option would be to paint the rim the same color or a different color. Um, and then the last option, you could actually just paint the whole inside of the bowl um, the same color as the outside or a completely different color. That's up to you. But you do want to touch up that rim. As I was placing my bowl down uh, to get started on the carving, I noticed that the bottom of the bowl was not setting flat. It was a little crooked. So I took a second to just tap the bowl on the table to kind of flatten it out before placing it on top of a template. Um, you could measure out equal sections, but I've got some really handy templates that have circles um, that have been segmented out. This one is equally divided into sixth, so I can divide the outside of my bowl into six sections to kind of help me decorate evenly. Now I'm gonna start the design process where I use a scraffito tool to carve out lines on the bowl. As you drag the tool over the surface, it will remove the colored underglaze and show the clay color underneath. This is the part where it's kind of really important if you want your design to show up that you have chosen a darker color. Um, if you're choosing like a very light colored clay like this one, if you have a darker colored clay like red earthenware, you're gonna to wanna to choose a lighter colored underglaze like yellow or pink in order to get a good contrast between the clay color and the underglaze color. When you start your scraffito process where you're carving out your design, you wanna have a plan. If you make mistakes, you can touch up mistakes with the underglaze, but it is noticeable if you carve kind of deeply, you're still going to see that recessed area where some of the clay was also removed, but you can touch up any of the white parts with some of the same color underglaze. I accidentally cut a tiny little spot, and so here I am touching that up just with a tiny dab of underglaze to fix my mistake. When you're done with your scraffito design, you want to make sure that your bowl is fired before you apply a clear glaze on top. 